thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm telling you my insights uh, about what's happening in the Netherlands uh, now, and to give you some, um, uh, uh, how do you say it? Um, and you can put uh, Gispe. Gispe is one of the sister companies of uh, Techo. We uh, are in the, uh, the group of uh, Royal Arendt. And Gispe is uh, specialized in uh, sustainable design. And in we are based in, uh, in the Netherlands. Um, so sustainable design and circular economy. Circularity is one of our approaches uh, at this, uh, this time. Uh, my role is manager circular economy, and I'm responsible for the transition from a linear to a circular business model, whatever that may be in, uh, in the near future. And lately I'm thinking a lot about um, sustainability, office furniture, where is our world uh, going. And when I was young, um, I saw everywhere in my own house by my grandparents um, those film rolls of Kodak. And uh, I'm thinking about which companies are surviving all those changes, uh, changings in, in this world. And I thought, what happened with, uh, with Kodak? So I looked into it and I found uh, on Wikipedia some history of, uh, of Kodak. Do you know Kodak? Yeah. Um, they were founded in 1888, so they are more than 100 years old. And in 1976, the year that I was born, they had 90% of the market for selling uh, uh, cameras and uh, the film rolls. And now I, I don't see them uh, anymore. And I looked into it, what was their business model? And their business model was the same with razors and razor blades. Um, that you, you um, they sold a cheap camera, but they earned their money with uh, selling all those consumables like the film rolls and all the stuff that you need to make uh, the pictures. Um, and if you see all the reaction of other people about that uh, company is that they re reacted s very slow on the changes that was happening in that, uh, that time. And they were yeah, a little bit cocky about their com competitors. Um, if you know that in 1975 they already had a digital camera and now don't think exist anymore, and yeah, there was something to think about. So what happened at uh, Kodak and what's happening now ri uh, right now in the Netherlands and in companies like uh, Gispe and Techo? This is happening in uh, in the Netherlands. We are shifting from a linear to a circular economy. A circular economy is this a term term what? Sounds a bell with you. Do you know what the circular economy is? Is the circular economy for everyone clear? Because my story is based on it. Because the, the basic principle on a linear economy is we make a chair, we use it, and after we used it, we throw it away. In a circular economy, you try to uh, use the resources uh, forever. The Dutch government has said in 2050 we want to have a circular economy in the Netherlands. And one of their approaches or tools that they use is purchasement uh, to um, boost a circular economy. And um, they, um, the government is now buying uh, all their furniture in a circular way. That means that 100 million. So they have a contract of 100 million, and Gispe won uh, that uh, contract, to um, buy their uh, office furniture the next 10 years in a circular way. But what does it mean? That could mean that 100 desks the next 10 years will come back to Gispe, uh, backwards in our optimi optimized linear uh, production uh, process with old trucks uh, and putting the 100,000 desks into Gispe, where we have to refurbish them uh, and have to make a new, uh, new furniture of, of them. Um, the 100 million means about 10 million a year, and that's about 6 or 7 percent of our revenues right now. So the government is a big client for us and has a big impact on our business model. So the question is, are we ready to change our business model or 
are we the same as Kodak? We are just refusing to change to what the uh, environment is asking us. Um, if I now go to our clients, I get every time the same questions. We have a cellar full of these kind of products. What can you do, Gisper? You, sa you said that you can help us with a circular, circular furniture. Um, what can you do with this desk chair? What can you do with the other chairs? We, of course, say, yeah, we can uh, reuse it. We, are circul uh, we have a circular bus business model, so we can make it as new. Okay, then I want uh, a new uh, upholstery. I want another color, and um, we have new regulations about uh, economics, so we want to shift our uh, desk chair in all kind of uh, stands. This chair can't, and then we think, oh, okay, that's interesting. Oh yeah, and um, besides that, we uh, we don't want to pay the price as new for a used uh, product, so we are prepared to pay pay 80% uh, of the new price of a chair. And uh, because the chair is already here, we uh, expect that you can deliver it uh, faster than uh, you do with a new chair. Okay, we really need to change. Another thing what is happening in the Netherlands, it's, it's war. It's war between systems and uh, certificates where you can measure sustainability or uh, circularity, where you can prove that your product is green or uh, sustainable or circular. There are all kinds of different uh, labels you can put on products. But if you try to measure circularity, we have two digital numbers which, which are important. Zero, zero virgin materials in your product, zero waste, and zero energy used to make this kind of chairs. And 100% closed circular system, and 100% reuse or uh, use of rapidly renewable materials. Interesting, but I have now a team uh, my company of uh, in my company of four people who are every day busy with measuring sustainability, prove that our products are real uh, sustainable. Uh, try to locate where our resources are uh, coming uh, from. There are now clients asking us, okay, are there conflict minerals in your products? If yes, and in every electric component there are conflict minerals, at which mine do they come? And can you prove it? And not say it to us, but a third par a party has to, to uh, um, yeah, make your claim right. Also, I think we have to change. And what can we lose at the uh, Dutch Covenant, the contract we have? We can lose the contract because we have all kind of terms agreed on that we have to improve our uh, products, we have to put more recycled content in it, we have to uh, improve our renewability uh, materials uh, in it, but we also have to repair uh, this chair in three days. Uh, doesn't matter where the the stool of the, the chair is, um, is based, but in three days we have to repair it. And if you don't comply those, uh, those requirements, yeah, you can lose your contract. But if we lose the contract to the government, all the companies related to our uh, uh, government will say, oh, this per count be circular. So it feels for me that we are in the same position as uh, Kodak. If we don't change our business model and approach to our customers, yeah, what will happen then? Um, and I have a little daughter uh, of three years old, and we sometimes walk in the, in the woods, and I'm thinking about, okay, what's our journey of tomorrow? And I think there are three important uh, principles. Sustainable design, because uh, now we make products almost uh, only in Excel, instead of making beautiful designs where we came from uh, as a, a product designer. Uh, measurability, how sustainable circular is a product. And can we reuse it? Can we reuse existing products? Or can we use the designs we na make now? And I think the, the most important thing is, and you heard it this, uh, this morning, is that the purpose we have as uh, uh, employee of the company like uh, Gispen is 
the need to change? Do you feel the need to change? Want to, do you want to change? Do you need future-proof furniture? But we also uh, have to take responsibility. Responsibility on everything we sell, of everything we buy, and everything we make. And we get, uh, to uh, to get used to uh, reusing our products, our components, and our materials. And reuse could be sexy. If there is a blonde Swedish beautiful girl on the beach with this, maybe it's sexy, but I think it, it isn't comfortable. So we need to think in other ways, how can we make re uh, reuse sexy? Um, and it could be price, 80% of a new price, for example. It could be better comfort. It could be better design. Um, what we see now is that there is a lot of um, enthusiasm about products with a story. So if you uh, have a product where everybody is talking about, it's interesting. I have uh, a few examples later. Um, but we have to find some ways that reuse is sexy. So what we did at uh, one of our clients is the ABN Amro, is one of our uh, biggest uh, clients. We sold uh, the desk on the left, upper left, the 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 next for the the next next desk. But we are now used to another way of working. So we have new adjustments of requirements what we have for desks. So we disassembled our old desks. We take them back. We dis uh, disassemble them. We reusing uh, different parts of it. We assemble the the different uh, frames, and we manage to reuse 60% of our product for 80% of the new price. And we already uh, refurbished uh, 80,000 8,000 uh, desk for for Abi and Amro. Another example is um, this um, this sofa. This is a uh, sofa we have already for 10 years in our collection and we now manage to um, reuse 95 percent of the product so for the for the hole for the base construction we use we use the doors of a cabinet we shredder them and with 3d printing we make that uh, construction we use old mattresses for the for the foam um, we can reuse uh, all the polyester what's in it um, yeah, steel you can reuse to make new uh, steel and we won a, a very important Dutch uh, design award uh, for it and we won that prize uh, especially for a not visible uh, sustainability because if you see that couch you can't see it it's sustainable so we made it on the on the side a little peak hole where you can see that there is reused material in it because otherwise our clients wouldn't believe us but this is another way, uh, another way um, of, of thinking. And the only problem with this is, is that it's 20% more expensive than the normal couch. And we're still selling it because this is a product with a story. Um, the last example is that um, uh, a lot of cabinets nobody use. Now the doors I explained, but we use the um, construction for new kind of products, and we named them Remade by Gispe, because we use uh, products of Gispe, but also from other brands. So you want to show people that you have uh, put value uh, on it. And we now um, reuse the shelves to make um, a picnic table, which you can put inside or outside. You can see, th see them uh, over here. Um, but this also is an... Um, an example of other way uh, of thinking. And one side, we see a lot of difficult to do things differently. From linear to circular is like hell. Uh, there is a war going on, all kind of systems and uh, certificates to prove that if you do something different, it is really sustainable. Uh, but I think that we can manage it to do the next 10 years 100 million in products and that are that are not new products but refurbished repaired maintained products the next 10 years uh, fully circular 
Thank you. Are there any questions? Just hoping for the best. Now, I d if somebody is telling me that they have a product of a way that is 100% circul circular, I don't believe them because it's not possible yet. Um, so we didn't put uh, a year on it when we want to go circular. Um, I think the most <laughs> important thing is that you have to change your mindset and your culture and your organization and try the best with which we can at, uh, right now. Is that the answer on your question? Other questions? Is the big thing circular economy in, uh, in Czech? Is it, is, it, is it something? Is it nothing? Um, for me, for us, circularity is one part of sustainability uh, next to um, wellness uh, or are there more human uh, different ways of sustainability. Um, but only resources is not the solution. We need a system and you need humans for make that system work. And one of the problems with circularity is, is that we are used to put the, the labor in places on the world where it's less expensive. And we are now locally trying to reinvent uh, that craftsmanship ship you need to make or reuse those products. And that's uh, one of the, the main issues or challenges we have right now. Um, especially in the Netherlands, we are a, a, a knowledge economy, so we are losing our um, craftsmanship um, and people who are um, yeah, ready to make all this uh, interesting uh, refurbished kind of uh, uh, production activities. Um, but in those um, zero and 100%, there is no space for what you asked to me. And the system to make it work, that's, that's where the human part is, uh, is based. And if we um, try to do economics on the way we are used to, to do more, more profit, more revenues, more, 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 it's not going to work. Does it make sense? Yes and no, and um, 
it's a this is a how question, and we are not as people so good, so, so good in uh, answer the how questions, especially at this time because we don't know yet what it is exactly. But my grandparents, they used their uh, washing machine for uh, 20 years, and if it was broken, they make it itself, and they get a component uh, somewhere from uh, somebody else or uh, a store, and we lost that that way of thinking. So we have to back. 100 years ago and make products which we are capable of, of refurbish them or repair them. That's step one. And then we can make step two. And what that is exactly, I don't know. And if you an answer, I'm really interested. <laughs> Other question? Yes, we can, but it's a real big struggle. Um, and that's what I mean with uh, the w there's a war going on, because every different kind of certificates, and uh, now you named three of them, ask for us, okay, uh, be transparent about whatever you do, air quality, uh, materials you use, uh, where it's coming from. Um, but it's a real big data question because we have about 1,000 different uh, products and from that 1,000 pr uh, different products we have all kind of different configurations. So from um, if you go to, uh, to buy a car, you see uh, a, a beautiful one in the, in the showroom. From that one we have those uh, data. But if you ask me, okay, we have this chair and I want exactly now how much energy is used for this one, that's a really difficult question. And we are really struggling with how are we going to approach this kind of uh, questions. <laughs> yeah, everyone is uh, struggling, especially well with uh, air quality, because um, we already had that the um, packaging of those uh, uh, of desks had more impact on the environment, which is measured in well than the product itself. So we tested the product, uh, and there are two places in Europe where you can do it. And uh, we measured by with our client, and there is a problem. So that's, that's yeah, we are children in that part of... Uh yeah. But everything we now deliver uh, to uh, government-related uh, customers, we have to deliver a bill of materials, so exactly how much of which materials in, in the product, where it's coming from, and what's the percentage of recycled uh, content, and even uh, uh, a manual with how can we uh, read this assembly, uh, the product, and what you're going to do with the materials when, you're when we are not using it. So that's a very big load of uh, yeah, uh, things you have to do as a, as a company to, to prove that you have the best intentions. So it, it's, it, it, it will be getting worse, I promise you, because in Europe there are regulations now coming that do the same for whole Europe. Other questions? We make uh, office furniture, so uh, a desk. Yeah. A desk and a just chairs, the, uh, the two, the, the two main uh, products. Yeah. Why did you ask that question? Because the yeah. Yeah. 
and then they ask for that, that, that desk, and then they uh, uh, buy a desk with a different top, and then they want to know where's that top coming from, and what you're going to do with that uh, tabletop uh, in five years. And uh, the tabletop for a desk is the biggest problem now because it's all um, mixed materials, and you can't get, get them back in the same conditions when we put it in because they are glued and melted. And so that asks something from our designers to think differently uh, about uh, the products. Um, it's changing rapidly, so in um, in the Netherlands, um, I think the percentage in well is 30% or something you need to, and I think it's about that range of what we see now in, in ov uh, offices, only uh, related to governments. If it's more private companies, then it's really different on the yeah, perspective of, uh, of that company. But uh, yes, sin, uh, sit stand um, uh, desks uh, has more influence on uh, well-being, so that's a different aspect of uh, sustainability. But it's different as circularity. Did you know Gispa before today, or ever heard of it? Yeah, yeah, one of the the brands uh, beside. Uh, uh, what's what's important uh, sustainab is, is sustainability something in uh, over here because this event is about uh, sustainable uh, sustainability and well-being are they front runners or is this a topic what's every day uh, in the business yeah and especially in office furniture And it's interesting because we now are forced by our government to use recycled concrete. So waste can be very variable. And that, yeah, that, that was a good part of the story I wanted to tell, that it, it is a big topic in the Netherlands now. So you see everyone working in the government want to get their goals, and they, they spread it through their uh, purchasement activities. Uh, and then you get a lot of people who have an opinion about it and trying to force it, and you see now that the government or the regulation goes m much faster as the market can adapt at this moment. And that, that is a real struggle for companies like uh, Gisp, uh, Techo, all that kind of uh, companies. Because um, you have to change all your business model. And uh, I think the challenge is to have it at the same, same speed. Because if you don't do something as a government with regulation, then everybody is, stu is still going in the way they used to 
and they'll make big, big changes. But if you other way uh, do the other way around, there are a lot of companies have a big problem because you can't change uh, your business model in one day. And that's yeah. I think the the my my biggest uh, nightmare is the same. What's happening in your uh, uh, world is that um, um, if you uh, lie a little bit about your um, uh, 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 how sustainable a car is, then you get in every newspaper. And you see the effects in uh, in what you sell. So, for example, Mercedes and BMW, they get in the newspaper about their uh, I don't know the English word, but uh, how much uh, uh, sorry, yeah, emissions they have in the in their car. And it's the same with our products. If there is in our uh, newspaper that uh, Gispe did something very terrible in their products. Even we don't know right now, because uh, Grown Six is that something uh, that's a hot thing now in um, a very uh, bad uh, material. What's in uh, in screws and um, and I learned now that in the uh, automotive uh, industry they don't use Grown Six on their screws. Because there was a, a political uh, uh, effort to get it out of that uh, product, but in the building industry and in, in furniture, it's still in there. So every uh, 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 building man is walking with these screws in his mouth, and every day get that bad um, material inside. So there are everywhere um, challenges to don't get in the in the newspaper and get a bad re reputation. And the point is, is it circularity? Is, for instance, is, is the furniture or is generally not the sustainable management and the security? And is this the main focus point where you, you should get really get better? Or is the circularity something that has we have to focus on in different fields? Yeah. You said like yeah. there's That's a good question. Yeah, now I, I think the reason is it's it, it's an easy product because everybody's sitting on it and you can talk about it. If uh, my every ex example I do, I can take this chair and uh, tell you a story about it. But does it influence the message? Like does, does no, but you have to. Yeah, true. 
but uh, is that necessary? Every drop makes an ocean. But I think you're right, you're right. But we now talking on a, 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 a congress about the furniture. Yeah. And that's... Uh, and that's the... Yeah. the dumping, for example, I mean, the users buy enough people that are using average, and the industrial doesn't have enough uh, fuel to cope everything in the end state. So mm. In the Netherlands, we don't have uh, landfill uh, anymore. So we, in, in the Netherlands, we don't have landfill anymore. And then we have the problem with uh, incineration. And that goes on and on and on. So we have a long way to, to go. Other questions or time for the next story and uh, get something to drink? Thank you.